The Science Success Center, with funding from Title V, presents Biology Exploring Life, a biology workshop. Hi, I'm Daniel. In life's hierarchy of organization, new properties emerge at each level. At the highest level, we have the biosphere, which consists of every living and non-living matter on Earth. Within the biosphere, we have ecosystems, which consists of all the organisms living and non-living in a particular area. Within an ecosystem are numerous communities consisting of all the living organisms. When we speak about a specific group of species in an area, we call them a population. An individual within a population is an organism. Continuing down the hierarchy of life. An organism is composed of organ systems. These systems provide a great variety of functions. Some systems are used to rid our bodies of toxins. Others help the body acquire energy from the food eaten. Organs are structures composed of several tissues, grouped together sharing a common niche. Within tissues are cells. Cells are the most basic unit of life and are able to survive on their own. Cells are composed of organelles, which are small compartments that have specific jobs within the cell. These jobs range from disposing unused molecules to transporting things to different areas of the cell. All organelles are made from molecules, meaning that two or more atoms are bonded together. Finally, atoms are defined as particles that have a specific amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Living organisms interact with their environments, exchanging matter and energy. Producers, like plants, use the sun's light as an energy source. This energy is transformed into chemical energy, like the fruits we love to eat. Consumers then consume chemical energy to sustain life. When consumers die, decomposers, like this fungus, break down the organism to recycle the materials. Cells are the structural and functional units of life. Cells are the lowest level of structure that can perform all activities required for life. Two types of cells exist, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cells are much smaller, have no nucleus, and no organelles. Eukaryotic cells are larger, have a nucleus, and organelles to help organize the cell's functions. The unity of life. All forms of life have common features. First is order. All living things exhibit complex organization. Second, regulation helps maintain an internal environment suitable to sustain life. In growth and development, inherited genes control the pattern of growth and development of organisms. All living organisms require energy to survive, which is called energy processing. The environment plays a huge role on an organism and in order to survive, it needs to be responsive to the environment. Life only continues when reproduction occurs. Therefore, all living things must reproduce. The environment changes periodically over time, and organisms must adapt to these changes. So lastly, all organisms must be able to go to an evolutionary adaption. The diversity of life can be arranged into three domains. Domains bacteria and archaea are living things composed of prokaryotic cells. In the domain eukarya, all the living organisms are eukaryotic cells. The domain eukarya is also broken down into sublevels: protists, plantae, fungi, and animalia. 
Evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. Evolution is species living today that are descendants of ancestral species. Charles Darwin's natural selection was to propose a mechanism for evolution in two observations, which gave rise to two inferences. Observation 1. Individual variation, which means that individuals in a population vary in many heritable traits. Darwin's second observation is the overreproduction of offspring, saying that all species have the potential to produce far more offspring than will survive to produce offspring of their own. Following these observations were two inferences. Inference 1. Unequal reproductive success. Darwin inferred that individuals are unequal in their likelihood of surviving and reproducing. Those individuals with the heritable traits best suited to the environment will leave the greatest number of healthy, fertile offspring. Finally, inference 2. Over time, favorable traits accumulate in a population, saying that over many generations, a higher and higher proportion of individuals will have the advantageous traits. An example of natural selection in action. Imagine a population of beetles that vary extensively in the color inherited, from very light gray beetles to a dark charcoal color. A predatory bird eats the beetles it sees most easily, the light colored ones. The selective predation favors the survival and reproductive success of the darker beetles. The surviving beetles have reproduced and more beetles with a dark exterior emerge. Scientists use two main approaches to learn about nature. Verifiable observations and measurements are the data of discovery science. Discovery science describes life at its many levels, from the biosphere down to the cells and molecules. Discovery science can lead to important conclusions based on a type of logic called inductive reasoning. This kind of reasoning derives general principles from a large number of specific observations. The second approach is called hypothesis-based science. By using the observations of discovery science as a stimulus to seek natural causes and explanations for those observations, this usually involves the proposing and testing of hypothesis. A hypothesis is a proposed explanation for a set of observations. Thank you for watching everyone. Come visit us at the SSC if you have more questions. Good luck on all your studies and tune in for the next workshop.